Welcome back to Huawei Routing and Switching Elite Training for HCIE. Today topic we are going to discuss on OSPF. Let's start our part 5. So the next we will look at on the default route OSPF management features based on how they manage the default route information. So for the default route, let's look at here. So over here on the default route, they have different areas based having the different default route. On the common areas, a default type 5 LSA is generated on an ASPR after the manual configuration and advertised to the entire OSBF AS. So this one you need to perform a default route advertisement on the common areas. So you will generate it based on the LSA type 5 to all the routers to the entire OSPF AS. And the another one we call as the stop areas, totally stop. For the stop area and totally stop, a default type 3 LSA is automatically generated on the ABR and advertised to the entire stop areas. And for the totally stop area as well, the type 3 is automatically generated on the ABR as well to the entire stop areas. So these two is a automatic automatically generated on the stop areas. So it means that when the areas belong to stop areas, the default route will be auto generated. Alright. And on the NSSA, a default type 7 LSA is generated on the ABR after a manual configuration and advertised to the entire NSSA areas and also a default type 7 LSA is generated on the ASPR after the manual configuration and advertised to the entire NSSA areas. So over here for NSSA areas they have two methods either you can generate it on the ABR or the ASPR but this one you need to go for the a manual configuration it means that you need to perform a default route advertised on the ABR or the ASBR Say on the totally NSSA areas is a automatically generated on the ABR and this one they're using the the type 3 LSA the type 3 LSA default route information will be automatic generated on the ABR routers so these are the five different areas how they manage a default route so for the common areas we have a type 5 type 5 LSA is always the the old ASE the preference of 150 and type 3 type 3 and type 3 this one is just a normal OSBF preference of 10 OSBF preference of 10 OSBF preference of 10 for type 7 you call it as a NSSA route NSSA default route is also 10 sorry it's 150 is 150 of the preference so these are the difference so on different areas they will generate a different default route so later we will show you that on the on the ENSP on the simulator you will see that this is come from 150 type 5 type 3 and the type 7 so other than that next we look at on the route filtering on the route filtering they can either using LSA filtering or the route filtering so LSA are not filtered during the route learning route filtering can only determine whether the calculate route are added to the routing table the learn LSA are complete so for the LSA filter it means that they will not learn at all when they come in to the ABR equipment ABR will be filtered the LSA information so they can be you ABR can filter the inbound or outbound of the type 3 LSA and ASBR filter the type 5 
imported type 5 LSA. This is what they can filter on the LSA. For the raw filtering, OSBF device filter the received intra area, inter areas, and the AS external route. And the raw filtering can only determine whether the route calculate used SPF are added to the routing table. And LSA generating route are still advertised in the AS. So it means that this LSA is still remain in your LSDB. So for LSA filter, you will not see inside your LSDB. But for the raw filtering, they still remain in your LSDB. They're just to filter on your routing table. These are the difference between the raw filtering and the LSA filtering. So you need to know in what type of situation you're going to use the LSA filtering or the raw filtering. Then next, let's have a look. The next will be on the uh, state machine. State machine on the neighbor relationship. Under the neighbor relationship, as I mentioned to you before, you when when you go for the five hello five packet OSBF packet, we're going through the in total there are five st uh, seven states. From the down state, they go to the init state. Init state they go to two way. From two way state they go to X start. From X start they go to exchange. From exchange they go to loading and the last state is a full state. This one as a seven state machine that we're going to perform the neighbor relationship and also the agency. So over here you just mainly concentrate on the neighbor relationship. So first they start from downstate. From downstate they will direct go to the init state. So in what type of situation they are going to the attempt is only that when you're using the point to multi point or MBMA. Because for the MBMA or the point to multi point you need to specifically define where is your peer. So that's why they need to go for the attempt. So only point to multi point and MBMA they'll go for the attempt. For point to point or the broad class they direct go for init. From init two way from two way they go to X time. So from the init state they will send the hello packet. So some of the routers under the broadcast and the MBMA network type they will just stay in the two way state. It means that they are the DR others under the two way state. So whoever is not under the DR others they go for the X start. Exchange start to start the sender a DD packet. So this is a neighbor relationship how they form the neighbor on the OSBF from the down state init two way and X start. Let's say you are running on the point to multi point and MBMA down state attempt init two way and the X start. So let's have a look for the agency. Agency relationship start from the X start. They first send the database description to select master or a slave to follow the master sequence number. After the negotiation done, they go for the exchange. They exchange the database description to check what type of the LSA I need to request from each other. Then they will go to the loading. Loading, they will go for the LSR, LSU, and when loading finish, they go to full stage as a LS acknowledgement. 
So these are the four steps. X start, exchange, loading, and going to the full state. Whoever in the full state, it means that you call this as a agency. Alright, so these are the four steps to perform the agency relationship. So these are the state machine for the agency and the neighbor. Then after this, next you're going to see that what's the difference between the OSBF and also the ISIS. We compare between the OSBF and ISIS based on the basic features. On the basic features, first have a look. On the similarities, they are both IGP and widely applied. They both support the IP network. They both adopt the hierarchical and the area-based design. But in this case, ISIS, they, they have one extra. They have areas and also they have a, a level. So for ISIS. Okay. But they both support the area-based design. That's why there's a similarities. The difference, the difference over here, OSBF only support the IP. ISIS support IP as well as the CLMP, the Connectionless Network Protocol. So these are the two protocols that support on the ISIS. And OSBF support various of network type, and ISIS only two network type. So what type of network type do we have in OSBF? We have a point to point, broadcast, point to multi point, and also MBMA. But for ISIS, they only support two. Either it's point to point or broadcast. These are the difference between the OSBF and the ISIS. And OSBF support the virtual link. ISIS provides the simili similar function but device of a few vendors support this function only. So it means the ISIS they have not no such thing called a virtual link. And OSBF work at the network layer and ISIS work as the data link layer. And OSBF divide areas based on the interface and ISIS divide area based on the link. So it means that in this case in OSPF So over here, one single router they can have belong to two different areas, but ISIS they divide the areas based on the link. So this one you can say this is the areas forty nine zero zero one, and this is the areas forty nine. 002. These are the difference in the OSBF and ISIS, how they divided the areas. So one router that can belong to two areas on the OSBF, but ISIS only one router that only can belong to one single area. So these are the difference between the basic features. And for the comparison between the OSBF ISIS the neighbor relationship. For the similarities, they both using the hello packet, establish and maintain the neighbor relationship, and the DR and DIS is elect on a non-broadcast multi-access network or the broadcast. Okay, because ISIS they have no MBMA, they only have a, a broadcast network type. And the difference, OSPF has strictly requirement for the establishing the neighbor relationship and ISIS has relatively loose requirement for establishing neighbor relationship. This one is depend on the hello, hello packets. Because in OSPF, they need to compare at least five information, but ISIS, they do not need to match all this information. That's why over here they said that OSBF is more stricter and ISIS is more 
lose requirement. And also, OSPF has a higher reliability in establishing the neighbor relationship on the point-to-point -point link. Comparatively, ISIS have a low reliability. Because OSPF, they need to go for the three-way. And ISIS, they only go for two-way to perform the point-to-point -point peering. And OSPF neighbor relationship, they have no, le no level. And ISIS neighbor relationship have, has two level. So in this case, because of OSPF, OSPF, they're based on LSA. And the ISIS, they're based on level. They have level 1, level 2, or level 1, 2. So on the OSPF, they have LSA 1 up to LSA 12. This is LSA number they have on the OSPF. And OSPF is defined the DRBDR, and ISIS is defined the DIS. They're using the different method to select the DRBDR and the DIS. In OSPF process, the DRBDR election, either they're based on the priority or the, the highest router ID. And the ISIS, either they're based on the priority or based on the MAC address. So these are the difference, how they define the o DRBDR in OSPF and how they define their DIS in the ISIS. Next, so how they perform the database synchronization between the OSPF and ISIS. So the both using the unified LSDB. So both because both of them they're running the link state algorithm, they'll form creating the same LSDB. So for the difference, OSBF LSA have a various type of the LSA. So we have type 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 7. And ISIS they have only using the LSP. So this is a difference, and OSPF and ISIS support different database synchronization process, and the time to live, the TTL value of the OSPF LSA start from zero, and the TTL value of ISIS LSP decrease from the maximum value. It means that they start from a two hundred and a fifty-five. So these are the difference on the database synchronization between the OSPF and the ISIS. And the last one the last one so after the database synchronization the next one we look at is uh, on the other features. So on the other features what's the similarities? So they both adopt the SPF algorithms to define the calculation and both support the features like loop free, fast conversion and support on the large network deployment. But the difference OSPF cost type are simple. Okay, the cost type are simple, but ISIS cost type are complex because ISIS they're based on the a TLV. So the cost type will be more complex compared to the OSPF. And OSPF support on demand darling and ISIS is not support on this function. This is on the other features. So that's all what we're going to cover on based on the principle. And next going on we go for the on the configuration command. Thanks for watching. Please do not forget to subscribe to our channel.